Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story. Client brought us a fake diploma and wanted us to take it to court. The second story. Worked extra hours to cope with a huge increase in workload. Asked how we'd get paid for it. Was told we won't. The third story. Woman parked in the loading area and accuses us of stealing a car. And the first story is... Do you want your forgery documents set to court? Sure. I work at a translation office. Our job is basically to translate official documents, work certificates, academic degrees, medical papers, etc. to be used in other countries. The whole service is controlled and monitored by the judiciary, and we're basically under their direct supervision. My boss had to be directly certified by the court. Some countries also require our translation to be double certified by the local court and or the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It's pretty routine work most of the time, but since these are official documents, there are a lot of rules we have to follow. Like what documents can be issued at official translation and how much we're allowed to charge down to the smallest pennies. My boss is usually a super cool guy and does all he can to help people who come in, sometimes even refusing pay from people who can't afford it even though he still has to pay the tax for the income since it gets registered in the system. Now, this is actually something my boss did. I fully agreed with him, but it wasn't my call to make. Last week, some guy, let's call him Mr. X, comes in and brings us a bunch of documents to translate, including work certificates, his academic diploma, and transcript of his grades, and some other stuff. He brought them in two batches, so by the time we received the second set of documents, his first set was already translated and double certified by the court and Ministry of Foreign Affairs. His grade transcripts were in the first batch, his diploma was in the second batch. This will be important later. At first, he refused to give us his diploma, saying that his mother had hidden the documents to prevent him from traveling abroad. Not the strangest thing we've heard, so whatever, but we kindly inform him that we're not allowed to issue a translation of copies and have to at least see the original document. So does the court and the ministry, so he goes and gets it a couple of days later. Now, I was the one in charge of his translations, and the moment I picked up his diploma, something felt off. It was too heavy. I actually had to check several times to make sure it wasn't two or three documents stuck together. A closer examination showed that a post stamp attached to the back was not real, but instead a copy. Strange. I call my boss since now I'm sure this is a forgery. He comes, checks the document, but it's really strange. These documents have forgery prevention measures like holograms, UV light sensitive prints, and seals, and most of them are in order except the stamp, in the back, and the fact that the photocopy looks strange. At this point I just suggested calling the cops and let them deal with it, but my boss, the good guy that he is, didn't want to get the guy in trouble and said he wasn't 100% sure, more like 90%, so he had someone bring it to the court to check, but instructed that person to be discreet, get their opinion, and get out with the document, not leave it there as evidence. So they did just that. Within the hour, the document was back in our hands with a suggestion from a court official that we should treat it as a forgery. Hearing that, my boss decides to get the fake diploma to the guy and send him away, as long as he brings us the translation we issued for his grade transcripts, which was for the same course as the diploma, so was also probably fake. He even offered to pay back the money he paid, just to get the translation to us, get your things, and go be a criminal somewhere else. Pretty lenient if you ask me, but it's his business, not mine. The next day we get a call from the local court, asking us why we're refusing to send the document belonging to Mr. X to the court to be certified. Turns out the guy had gone to court and filed a complaint against us because we refused to do his work. So now my boss is peeved and does just as Mr. X wanted, sends the forged diploma to court. They of course immediately can tell it's a forgery. They seized it, opened an investigation against Mr. X, and now he's on the hook for multiple crimes, some of them with serious jail time. The court also asked us to give them the serial number for all the documents ever translated under this guy's name. Everything, including ID documents, work certificates, everything, so that they can contact all embassies and warn them about the possibility of forgery, which probably means the guy will be blacklisted in every country that matters. My boss made some excuse at first about not having all the serial numbers ready, but then Mr. X came in Monday with his father and issued some strange threats, so the next workday all the serial numbers were at court. We also didn't have to pay his money back. And to think, had he just done his ass, he wouldn't be on the hook for so many crimes, and he would also receive a full refund. I would still call the police personally, but I have to admit this was more entertaining. It's not like he didn't know his stuff was forgeries. We get some of those, people who get scammed by imaginary collages, and almost cry when we tell them they've been scammed. 
but this guy had a forgery document from the largest university in the entire country. And it looked like a professional job as well, so he probably had to pay a lot of money to get it. Plus, my boss was also worried that we might get drawn into a lengthy legal battle if the guy sues for defamation, which is a criminal offense here. Basically, he felt bad for the guy and also didn't want the possible trouble. There's a lot of red tape about issuing replacement diplomas here, and the reason the diploma is necessary is exactly because of someone like him. Transcripts are just a piece of paper with the grades on it, signed and sealed by the university, and signatures and seals are easy to create a forgery of. A diploma, on the other hand, is printed on special papers, with security measures, and has a tracking code that helps us see if it's real or not. Even if he needed only his transcripts to be translated, we needed to see the diploma first. The second story is... You stay until the kitchen is cleaned. When I was 16, I worked at a fast food chain on a small island. Things are usually very quiet here. We take no more than 2,000 pounds in a day, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. There's an event on the island that brings in a huge number of people from abroad, often doubling the island's population for a month. During the two-week event, we were open until 11 p.m. with one hour at the end of each day allocated to cleaning and closing the store, bringing us until 12 a.m. midnight as our finishing time on a closing shift. During the event, there's a lot of drinking and a lot of people going for takeouts, so we get absolutely swamped. We even have to ship in staff from other stores in the UK to assist. More on them later. We'd close the doors at 11 p.m., but there would still be a huge queue of customers, which could easily take 30 plus minutes to get through, and then all of those customers are allowed to sit indoors until 12 a.m. when we can kick them out, but often we didn't want to pick a fight with drunks, so we let them leave of their own accord. As you can probably imagine, this makes cleaning the store impossible by 12 a.m. The first night we were there until about 1 a.m., the next night it was closer to 2 a.m. When I asked the area manager about how we were getting paid for these extra hours, he said we don't. We were only to be paid until 12 a.m., as that was our shift on the Rota. I said that I don't want to be working two to three hours each night, morning, for nothing, to which he replied, you stay until everything is cleaned like everybody else. If I find out you leave without properly cleaning everything, we're going to have a problem. I went home, talked to my parents about it, and we made a plan. So on my next shift, it was chaos, busier than I've ever seen it. Queue out the door and halfway up the street. We weren't able to start cleaning until at least 1230. The place was a mess, and it ended up being about 3.30 before I called my mom to come pick me up. I was wired on energy drinks just to keep awake, and when I got home I couldn't sleep at all, and I was scheduled in for a 9am start the next, current morning. I slept for about 2 hours before I had to drag myself out of bed to get ready for work again and operate pressurized fryers filled with 350 degrees Celsius oil. What could go wrong, right? The reason I called her for a lift home was so there was a record of it happening, and I also stood near one of the cameras so there was a recording with audio on the shop CCTV. The law where I live clearly states that anybody under 18 is required to have at least 8 hours away from the workplace in any 24-hour period. That obviously didn't happen, so they broke the law, and my mom knew this. She called up the area manager to ask him what happened. He basically repeated what he had said to me, and she mentioned to him about the law and that by informing him of it, it's now 100% his responsibility, and he would be liable for anything that happened during my shift, whether that's property damage, injury, etc. She also said she'd be reporting it to the equivalent of a union. We don't have unions here. He was used to bullying the staff here as most were teens or young adults, who were too scared to stand up to him, but he very quickly changed his attitude now that his neck was on the line. He called the local manager and told him to let me leave work for the day, with full pay, immediately, and as soon as it hit 12 a.m. on the next closing shift, I was again ordered to go home so no more working without being paid. Once the other staff got wind of this, they followed suit. This had another extra bonus for us all though, which was probably the sweetest part of this. Remember the staff they shipped over? Well, they got early shifts so they could go out and enjoy the partying that went on, while we were all stuck in working until 3 a.m. They even had the cheek to come in, because they had keys, and have a dig at us about taking so long, which resulted in an argument and one of them crying. Anyway, the cleaning that we weren't able to do then became their problem. When they arrived in the morning, which meant they had to either start earlier or work like crazy to get the shop open in time, or they'd face the wrath of the area manager. F them and F the area manager. The last story is, ma'am, no parking in the loading zone. So I ended up ruining someone's day a while back all over a little sign that reads, no parking, loading zone, eight o'clock to 17, Monday through Friday. I was delivering to a larger mixed retail strip mall in a Toronto suburb. The place doesn't have a rear delivery area, so by design there's blocked off areas on the side of the complex to allow delivery vehicles, garbage and courier access to unload during the day. The place also has a medical center next door. That medical center charges for parking, the strip mall doesn't. 
So enterprising people will park and walk over, even though a multitude of signs prohibiting the practice are plastered all over the lot. So the complication is that the loading area is closest to the medical arts building, has parking lines laid down, but is signed no parking. Loading zone 8 o'clock to 17, Monday through Friday. Dozens of cube trucks use this lot daily for their needs. However, it's not often that a full-size semi, me, has to use it. I need every inch of that lot to position properly so that I can get the freight off and on my merry way. Often I'll arrive and there's a single car or two occupying a space. They're a bother but can be negotiated around easily. On this morning I rolled into the lot when a full-sized Escalade pulls in behind me and parks right beside the loading ramp in the one spot that absolutely ruins my approach. There's literally 50 spots in the loading zone to choose, and like 500 spots in the actual parking lot. I rolled down my window and motion I needed to use the ramp. Now, most self-aware, self-conscious people would get the hint. Nope, Mrs. Self-Important decide that she's parked, y'all can deal, unloads her booger readers into the stroller, and obviously ignores me as I'm protesting her parking choice. My parting shot? Great example you're setting for your kids, lady. Earn me some shade and a casual, obscured middle finger salute. Fine then, I have nothing but time on my hands. Rushing around and in a hurry? I can solve that for you. Called the towing number on the sign. Says there are less than an hour out. Then called my store contact who spotted in my reversing. He also called the towing company to complain. With an extra pair of eyes, I placed my trunk inches from her back bumper. Snapped a couple cell picks for liability coverage and started unloading. Then karma came calling. Self-addressed to Mrs. Self-Important. A compactor garbage truck came through to empty out the mall's bins a little over to the right of Mrs. Self-Important's parking spot. After some eye rolls from the garbage truck driver, the empty bin miraculously managed to end up blocking her only path of escape after my tight squeeze parking. Oh crap, she's hemmed in now. So I got a crew of guys unloading me. We're all anxious knowing the SH is gonna hit the fan. Finally, the fruits of our labor ripen. The tow truck arrives, looks at the situation we've created, and is nothing but laughs. He's snapping pictures of the mess. He dollies the wheels of the Escalade and slides it perfectly out and onto his flatbed. Ten minutes and he's gone. Security arrived during the tow out and remained. Sure enough, 90 minutes after leaving, Mrs. Self-Important is returning from the medical center. Rugrats in tow. Goes from zero to righteous nuclear indignation in an instant. Demands to know where her car is. One of the guys unloading me hollers, oh, the one blocking the ramp? It's towed. Her phone is out in an instant, videoing us claiming harassment, theft, damages. She's on 911 in a flash, accusing us of stealing her car. Security quickly intervened and in the most professionally condescending tone, possible, explains the signs, the tow-away loading zone, and the contact for the company who towed it. The region's finest in blue show up and take over. I give a quick statement and the officer basically says, ah, civil matter. She ends up relenting defeated and a taxi is called. I wrap up unloading my truck under her murderous stare. So I'm rolling out and on my way, and I get a text from my dispatcher. You stealing people's cars now? I hope you love these stories. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out.